Are you ready? Hi, everyone. My name is Co Carnage. Uh, you can find me at twitch.tv slash Co Carnage. Um, I'm here today to uh, give you a brief beginner tutorial on what this game is. Now, this game is called RimWorld. Um, it is a very, very fun strategy survival simulator. You play um, a group of colonists that have crash landed on a planet, and your goal is to build a ship to get off it while surviving tribe attacks, pirates, wildlife, disease, famine, everything you can think of. Heat, cold, uh, it's, it's crazy. Um, but anyway, uh, we're doing a moderator run right now, so I'm naming all my colonists after moderators, so you'll see those names in a second. And uh, yeah, so what I'm going to do is kind of give you guys an idea if you just got the game on how to get started. So I'll actually start right at the beginning here. Um, so the first thing you do is you create a world. Now a, a world is basically kind of just a random area where you can pick um, your starting location. Most of it's random, so there's, there's only like overarching things that you're going to need to pick. Um, you can put any seed you want. If you want to play along with me, if you want to play the map in this tutorial, then you can follow along what we're doing now. We're going to generate the co-carnage world, 4x300 size, and here it is now. So, what this is, this is, this is where you start your game, and you basically get to pick where you're going to land. Um, every one of these locations is a different biome, and you can see those biomes by clicking on it. You can scroll in and out with the mouse wheel. Um, wherever you see these little icons, these are mountainous regions or plain regions. And you can see here under the terrain, if we click down here, it's flat. If we click up here, the terrain is mountains. Um, to start with, if it's your first time uh, playing the game, I do recommend going with a mountain region. And you'll see why in just a second. Evil McDarkness! Good show, my friend. Thank you very much for the sub. Welcome to the sub club. Guys, give him a warm welcome if you could. Um, but yeah, so I recommend going with a, a region. Also, uh, there's, there's a couple other important things on this... Uh, on, on this map to look at as well. First of all is the terrain, uh, biome, and then the uh, growing period. Now, if you go into a jungle area, you can see here the biome is tropical rainforest, you can see that the growing period is year round. So this is one of the things that, that is important to, you know, you'll, you'll be able to grow food here all the time. Now, if you go into some of these other areas, you can see the growing period gets reduced, April to September only. So what this means is generally outside of those months, you're going to have a lot harder time growing food. And unless you have like hydroponics or something like that, um, then uh, it's going to be much more difficult to do. So what we're going to do here at this point is we're going to go um, to start with, we're, we're, we're going to make it a little bit easy for us just so we can kind of focus on the base building. We're going to pick a mountainous region in the tropical rainforest, which means we will have to deal with some heat issues, but we can hopefully get around that. Um, a year-round growing period, and uh, mountainous. So this looks good right here. Now, um, right now we're still in the world creation mode, so we have to actually save and finish first. That's going to save our world. Now we can go into new colony. Um, new colony is how you actually start the game, by the way. What we were just in is creating the world. So we're going to go into new colony. Um, the storytellers here are basically what the game is going to throw at you. So this AI storyteller, Cassandra Classic, is kind of a general learning curve, you know, slowly goes up. The encounters are going to get harder towards the end of the game. Pretty standard. Um, Phoebe Base Builder gives you a lot of time between disasters to relax, but if you're set at the high challenge rates, like challenge and plus, then it's still going to be really difficult. And then this guy is the tough one. And the big problem with this guy is a lot of times, because he's Randy Random, you get a lot of like back-to-back -back stuff, attacks. Um, and that can really be tough. That's the one I've been playing recently. It makes the game a lot more interesting, but if you're learning the game, I'd probably recommend going with Phoebe Base Builder. So we're gonna do a casual Phoebe Base Builder run. Um, actually, you know what, we'll do a rough, we'll do a rough Phoebe Base Builder run and go from there. So um, your, na your worlds get automatically named, even though we seeded it with Co-Carnage, it's not gonna be called Co-Carnage, um, so, but you can just kind of go by the dates. The last built date was this one. So this is gonna be our world. Um, before you actually select your landing site, uh, you want to be careful to go down to advanced and set your map size. Also, if you're playing on a map that has a starting, like a, a very small build cycle or a growing cycle for your plants, I recommend syncing your starting area with your starting month. So if your growing is like uh, April to October, 
I'd say go ahead and set your starting month to April, and that way you'll actually be starting in your growing month. You can, of course, go hard mode and, you know, set it to, like, you know, right after October and just go ham. Um, but that's going to be pretty difficult. Um, so that's, that's going to be kind of up to you. Uh, map sizes. Um, there, there's a give and take with map sizes. The smaller your map, the less options you're going to have. But at the same time, if something happens across the map, your, your guys will actually be able to get to it and get back without starving, you know, going crazy, any of that stuff. If you set it as 400 by 400 and you build in like the bottom left corner, if a colonist, if a drop pod crashes in the top right corner, it may take your character a day to get there and back. And that can cause problems. Um, so just keep that in mind when you're when you're selecting your map size. I generally go in the middle. I usually stick to kind of large um, for my playthroughs. As for uh, the month, let's go ahead and just set it as auto. Whatever. No big deal. We're going to go back down to where we were, which is kind of in the south region. We're going to pick a mountainous year-round growing area. So we'll pick some mountains. There we are. Tropical rainforest, mountain, year-round year growing area. Stone types are not a big deal unless you're doing something specific. I don't really uh, do much from there, so... Um, but yeah, it's it's kind of uh, yeah, kind of goes from there. I'm gonna go ahead and turn chat off the stream for the rest of this particular highlight. Um, <laughs> but uh, yeah, we'll go from there. We'll turn the chat back on when we're done here. So once you've selected a site, this is when you pick your colonists. Now this is very important. A lot of people just hit start from here. If you're looking for the most challenge, ignore all this and hit start. But what I do is I try to roll colonists that, especially the first three you get, you need to have some specific skills that are really going to help. Now there's three different things you're going to be looking at. You're going to be looking at the main skills, you're going to be looking at incapable of, and you're going to be looking at traits. Now if you really want to go in depth with it, then you're going to also be looking at coma child, the, the backstory stuff. But all this really does is influences incapable and skills. So you don't really have to go down these unless you're kind of really interested in doing it. These just kind of influence the rest of your values. So what I usually recommend is going for, there, there's five skills you want off the bat. And what those skills are, are shooting. You need to have at least one person that's decent with a gun and that's for defense. Um, doctoring or medicine. You need to have one guy that can at least treat other colonists if something goes wrong. Uh, cooking, which is very important early on growing which you need to get your food especially at the beginning and uh, mining which especially since we're going to be doing a mountain build you need to have at least one person really good at mining and then you're going to see later how we stick that person to that mine so first thing we're going to do you can randomize your character up here which randomizes every single aspect of it um so we're going to keep going the first guy let's make our first guy a good miner so what we're looking at right now is mining. Now these little flares next to the skills indicate a passion level. Um, if a character is passionate at something, he will learn it quicker. You can have a small flame, a large flame, or two large flames. And uh, it goes anywhere from uh, 1x to I think 1.5 is the max. And actually now that I'm looking at it, maybe you can't have a single large flame. Maybe it's just small and then too large. Yeah. Anyway. Okay, so we're looking at mining right now. So what we'll take is any character. Hey, Staltic! Good show, buddy. Thanks for your sub, man. Really appreciate that, and welcome, welcome to the sub club. Um, there's there's two important things you're looking at when you're rerolling characters. One, for whatever you're trying to get on that character, so in this case, mining. And two, for your beginning characters, unless you are um, really kind of 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 fine-tuning your characters to make sure you have everyone you want to make sure that your first characters are not incapable of too much if you um if you have a uh if you have all of your characters incapable of various things then you'll kind of start pigeonholing your characters and if one of your characters gets incapacitated for any reason it can end your whole playthrough so that's one of the reasons that i'm very big about making sure all three of your first characters are not incapable of anything another thing you want, want to look out for is the traits uh lazy uh psychotic and um there's a couple others that we'll get to where we when we get to them but um lazy will make it so your, your guy works a lot slower which can again at the beginning you don't want that and um psychotic and uh can make it so they're always sad and they bring other people down around them um uh, abrasive is another very bad trait if an abrasive character talks to a non-abrasive character the non-abrasive character will actually take a negative mood hit 
It's it's really bad. So he literally goes around your colony spreading hate and bad vibes. Stay away from him. Uh, Slowpoke is also a bad one. Uh, they just slow our move speed. So, yeah, as I was saying, not to get too much into it, we're going to go ahead and, and get this done real quick. You want to make sure your characters have the passions. You want to make sure they're not incapable of stuff. And um, it can go from there. Now, this guy's not great at mining, but he's got a passion and a high level in medicine. So we could make him our doctor. Um, he's also a decent cook. So what I think we're actually going to do is we're going <laughs> to... Meowski? This guy's name is Meowski. What I think we're going to do is name this one. So we need a... We're going to do... We're going to make this one Renea. Renea. There we go. So Renea is going to be our medicine and our cook. So you... Already a decent miner and social. Oh, I really don't like how this person can't do research or crafting. Oh, and they're lazy. Nah. If, if lazy wasn't there, I might actually consider this, because both research and crafting are considered mid-game skills. Um, but in this case, I think we're going to go ahead and re-roll, since it is right at the beginning. So we need a grower or a shooter primary. Oh, now here we got a really good grower that's also a good shooter. And she's got passion. Or, excuse me, he's got passion. Um, he is incapable of intellectual or artistic, so he's not going to be doing any research, and he's not going to be doing any art. But again, these are these are mid to late game skills, so we don't need to worry about those too much. Um, research disabled comes from the medieval farm oaf, and uh, research and art disabled comes from scout. Oh, he's neurotic though. Oh, so you see, this is one of those give take traits. It's kind of interesting. He works faster. But he also breaks easier. But you know what? We'll take that. We'll take that. Hyperialist. Call him Hyper. There we go. Alright, so for the last guy, we've got our grower. We've got our medicine cook. So we need a miner. Whoa. Okay, so we found a good miner. But there's two issues with this guy. One zero shooting, which means he won't be able to use a gun, which is fine, because he actually has decent melee. But this right here is going to be a big problem. Um, oh, oh wait, no, I got it opposite. I thought this was the one that liked colder environments, but this is the one that likes hotter environments. And since we're in a tropical rainforest, this is actually this is actually okay. This guy will work. It's actually rare that we have a first roll, but that's great. Uh, we'll call this one bonsai. Cool. Okay, so that is basically a, a small explanation on how to set up your world, pick a landing spot, pick a game type, and then pick your initial colonists. Once you have all this done, now now keep in mind, um, you can make these colonists however you want to. And one of the very cool things about this game is you can kind of role play a little bit. So if you have if you want to do a colony that's based on your friends and people you know, you can keep re-rolling until they kind of fit a skill set you want and then just go with that. You don't need to have optimal characters at the beginning. The reason I do this is because it kind of helps the whole playthrough. Um, and it's especially good for players that aren't, you know, the best at the game. Um, which I wouldn't know who those players were. But, um, yeah, it's good for them. Okay, so let's go ahead and uh, get started. Yeah. Tusker, good to see you this morning, man. How are you? And Pestilence, good to see you, buddy. Banana Rammer, awesome. Awesome. Good to see you, too. All right. So, this is how you start a game of RimWorld. First thing you do, you let your people land, and you hit the spacebar. Now, spacebar pauses the game, and you need to get used to hitting spacebar a lot. Because anytime you're kind of issuing commands and you're not 100% sure of what's going on, the game should probably be paused. So what we're going to do, we're going to go over two things first. Um, the first thing we're going to talk about is base selection. Where you're going to put your base on the map. Um, this is a, a large point of contention and different areas have better and different ways to treat them. So one of the things you want to look for when, when deciding where your base is going to be. Choke points. Uh, power location, um, terrain type, and for me, what I like to do is looking for look for mountains with choke points. So um, in this case, a quick look at the map shows me here, and I'm really liking what I'm seeing down here. 
because immediately this is the only way in now granted they can come right from here so we need to set up a line of defenses here but we could kind of build in this back corner we'd have all this room to work with on our base we could even extend out into here and maybe walk that off um, while at the same time, we've got a geothermal vent, which we can use for power right there. And hopefully somewhere in all this area, we can expose some more vents as well. So we've got one guaranteed vent, a great outer map choke point, which is uh, what what the, I call it. There's, there's outer and inner choke points. Inner choke points are like here, where no matter where the enemy comes from, including here, we could use that as an inner checkpoint. This is more of an outer checkpoint. Uh, choke point excuse me because anywhere else on the map so if the enemy spawned here they'd have to make their way through here remember that once an enemy is on the map they can't leave it unless they leave it permanently so even though enemies can attack from here and they can also warp in which is good to know um so they could warp in technically right there if they wanted to um but yeah this this will kind of help so what we'll probably do to start with is put our defense line here and that will cover both of those points. And then as we expand out and start taking control of this area, we'll just set up a whole line of turrets here. Another really good, um, another really good uh, tip is whenever you have these areas here, make sure to put dumping zones in these areas. And what that'll do is fill them with rock. And if enemies do come through the area, they basically have to slowly make their way over rock before they actually start running in. So. Um, Anyway, that's that's a bit more advanced. That's later. We're going to talk about initial colony setup now. So, we've went ahead and picked a picked a spot. There's plenty of good spots on this map. This would actually be a good spot too. You could wall off this area, and um, actually, now that I'm looking at it, you know what? Maybe maybe we will do up here. We could we could wall this area off with steel walls, forcing the enemy to come through this choke point and just line this with defenses. That would work pretty well. We also could, um, got some metal down here too we could take advantage of. Actually, yeah, just, just for time's sake, let's go ahead and establish our base here. The primary reason being, um, one, another important thing to decide when picking your base is understand that when your colonies, colonists land, you see all these red X's? This is all stuff that landed with Chronic Gamer. Good to see you, buddy. This is all stuff that landed with your colonist. Now, in the current state, if there's a red X on an object, your colonist will never touch it. So off the bat, your colonists are not going to touch any of this stuff. Um, now, as you can see, a big problem with that is the three food they dropped with, which they absolutely need to survive, is marked as don't use. So what you can do is double click that to select all of them and the item for forbidden, or the hotkey is F. So you can just hit F. Now what that's gonna do is allow them to eat all this. Now, the same thing for the med kits. Now we, don't, we aren't gonna be using med kits anytime soon, but we wanna give them access to it. Um, another important thing to mention is your character, uh, your, your con is dropped with three weapons, a rifle, a pistol, and a knife. And you'll wanna be sure to get those allocated quickly. So what we'll do is again, we'll pop open our character. You can select any, uh, any colonist and click on character to get a full rundown of what they are. Um, this is again all the stuff we picked when we started. And um, what you do here is uh, look, you can you can use the key, the P, uh, period key on your keyboard and the comma key on your keyboard to go through your colonists. And any window you have open will then update to that colonist. So what we can do right now is look at the different stats they have. So Renea shooting three, Hyper shooting six, and Bonsai shooting zero, but melee five. So this is going to work perfectly. We'll give Hyperialist, the nice shooter, the rifle, and we can do that by right-clicking on an equip. Now keep in mind, if an item is forbidden... Oh, my head's over the skill window? Oh, it is. That's a good point. Thank you, Renea. <laughs> um, actually, you know what? Let me go ahead. Well, I actually don't, I don't need to move it up right now, but you guys, you, you guys know what's behind there. Um, but basically what I'm saying is if you look... Uh, let me turn that way. Bonsai right here with the shooting. Bonsai has a zero shooting, so we're going to give him the knife. And then uh, Hyper has six, so we're giving him the rifle. And then Renee has three, so we're giving her the pistol. Um, anytime you right-click and, uh, and equip an item, it will take the forbidden status off it, so you don't have to worry about that. Now, I think the knife is behind here. Yeah, Plasteel Knife. So we're going to get Bonsai to equip that. So we're just going to tap pause to un... We're going to tap space to unpause it, let them get their weapons, and then pause again. 
great. Okay, so now they're all armed, which is a bonus. Um, so next, what we're gonna do is we need to get our base started. So there's two important things when starting your base. The first is you immediately want to get a growery down. Um, you need to, you need to get your your colonists starting to work on food if you're in a growing area because that's going to be really important. Um, Crazy Tony, I did just start, and this is also going to go on YouTube. So if you have any questions, want to look over it from the beginning, uh, Red Eye Monster is going to get this update on YouTube, and you can watch the whole thing again at the beginning. Um, so what we're going to do first is we're going to go to zones. Now, the way that this game works, if you've never played Dwarf Fortress, is you basically you mark areas to have work done, and then your colonists go to those areas and do the work. So what we'll do first is we'll pick a growing zone, We'll tell, the care, we'll tell the colonists we want this grown here, and we'll put a zone down right there. Now, when you start a growing zone originally, it is, you can, cl you can click on it uh, to click on it, or you can click on it to select it. Now, by the way, cool tip, if you ever click on something, like let's say I want to select this growing zone, and you, you click on something else by accident, you can then click on it again to go down the value of that tile. So if I click on this tree, it's going to select the tree first. If I click it again, it's going to select the uh, the stockpile. You can also click on an item and this little down arrow that you see right here will select the next item on that square. So if you ever like have a bunch of stuff that may be piled on top of each other, um, you, can, uh, you can use that to get to it. Now, one of the things we're gonna do with our growing selected, all first grows are potato plants, which are a great form of food. You can kind of see that right there. I just have it selected potato plants. Um, what we're also going to do is we're going to set another growing zone, just a line right next to it. And actually, that's two lines. We want one line. If you ever, by the way, put down a zone and you don't want to use it, there's the delete zone function. And you can just remove it from there. And this one, we are going to set as... Oh, wait, that's a normal stockpile. I want a growing zone. Growing zone right here. And we're going to set this one as... Zerigium. Zerigium. And what Zerigium is, is it's basically a plant that the second it's harvested, um, it gives you med kits, herbal medicine, which can be used for medicine. So, uh, or for healing people. So you want to get that set up early. And if your grower is doing it right, it won't be a big deal. He can do all that normally. So we've now established um, an area for food, which is great. So what we're going to need to do next is establish an area for our colonists to basically stockpile all of the stuff so what we're gonna do is select the normal stockpile and we're just we're not even gonna touch it we're just gonna put it right there and that's basically now an area that your colonists know if I have an item and I don't know where it goes but it's ours we're gonna put it there if you have a colonist that's hauling currently hauling is a skill so now that we have this down the last thing we're gonna do is start building our mountain base now, um, the way we do that, we go to orders, and it's kind of like selecting a stockpile, except what you're doing is you're marking the area that you want your miners to mine. So what you're gonna be doing is, um, everyone builds their bases differently, and I highly, highly uh, suggest that you experiment. Um, the way that you see me build my base right now is just the way that I've done it after, you know, the amount of time that I've been playing. But you may find much better ways to do it and I and really experiment with this. It's, it's really a great game to do that with. So what we're going to do is we're going to make a two wide hallway, just like that. And um, now what I do, I'm, I'm going to get, I'm going to kind of jump ahead a little bit, but I just, I'm going to let people know what I'm thinking. Um, this growing area is going to serve as our main food source, and we want that to be next to our refrigerated food storage. Um, we also want that to be next to our food production room. So what we're going to do is we're going to go to our orders. And by the way, if you're ever here, if you ever just have nothing on the screen, you can right click to bring up your menu down here. You can also right click to put it away. So you don't necessarily need to use the escape key. If you ever see this menu pop up while I'm playing, it's probably because I've accidentally hit the escape key too many times. Um, so right click to bring up the section here. Now we're gonna click the plan tool. Now the plan tool, I didn't use it when I started, but I recommend getting used to using it early. The plan tool allows you to basically put down markers without having your colonists do anything to them. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna plan our cooking area 
We're just going to go right here. And then we are going to, from here, plan our frozen storage. So there's going to be one door here into our cooking area. Um, we're then going to have two doors into our storage, which we're going to put right there for now. Uh, we're going to have two AC units in our storage that we're going to put there. And then we will have, um, actually, you know what, we'll probably bring it down. And then we'll put a door slash airlock system, which you'll see in a minute, right there as well. So this, this should work for our refrigeration unit. Um, but again, since this is just planned, they're not going to touch any of this. Kitty Chaos, have a great one. See you later. Um, so the only mining they're actually doing right now is here. So what we need to do is get um, some real structure going on. So we need, we need all this stuff to connect properly. And the way we're going to do that is by pulling this over here. And actually, you know what? We are going to remove that. We're going to put a door here and here to easy, easily give access to our refrigerated storage. We're going to pull another path down here for later. But what this is going to do is now that we know this is where all the other stuff's going to be, we can really place our rooms. Now, there's important things to mention about placing and designing rooms in this game. Now, anytime you look at a colonist, you can click on thoughts, and thoughts are going to tell you all of the negative and positive influences to your character. This is an extremely important part of the game, because as you develop your colony, managing the thoughts of your individual colonists are what are going to keep your game moving forward. If you ignore this kind of stuff, then eventually their mood is going to fall so much that they're going to leave the colony. They're going to rebel and actually kill your other people. They'll just flee and walk right off the map. Um, it gets pretty bad. So you need to make sure to manage the moods of your characters. Um, now, there's a particular bonus that you get called Spacious Interior. And to get a Spacious Interior, you need to have your character's bed be in a 6x6 six six room. So a lot of people have asked me, why do I always design my bedrooms in 6x6? Six six? It's specifically to get the spacious interior buff. Now, another good question is, why did I plan all of this stuff, but only mine the bedrooms? The Sir McCheese! Good show, buddy. Thanks for your sub. Welcome to the sub club. Thank you for joining us, bud. Guys, let's give him a warm welcome. Awesome. Westy TV! Good show, sir. Thank you for your subscription. Welcome, 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 and thank you for joining us, buddy. Guys, let's give him a warm one, too. Okay, so um, the reason that we only planned this out and didn't mine it is because mining takes time. And the longer that your characters don't have functioning bedrooms, the worse their mood gets. So you really want your miners focusing on getting your bedrooms made at the beginning um, before you actually start pushing them to do other things in your colony. So that brings us to our next section. All right. So we have picked a base location. We have put down the initial infrastructure, a stockpile, a growing zone, and we've mapped out our base. Now keep in mind, you don't have to build your base in walls. And what you could have done for, or in mountains, what you could have done, for instance, is just come out here while paused, and you could have gone to structure. Um, you could have selected wood walls. You could have built uh, your six by six stuff here. That's not six by six, but let's say it was. And then you have one here. You can you can build your base wherever you want. And you can put down the blueprints anywhere you want to. So don't necessarily think you have to do it how I am. It's just you want to make sure that before your, your guys really start working, that you have that kind of plan ready to go. So we've put down our initial base framework. We've got a stockpile. We've got a grower. Um, we've got some med stuff going up as well. Um, and honestly, the med stuff can come later because you do start with some medicine. But it's